What fate awaits them in the darkness? Let them come. Carrick Eight Peaks was one of the greatest strongholds ever created by the Dwarves during their Golden Age, rivaling even the capital city of Karaz Akarak in terms of size, wealth, and beauty. For many generations, it was a proud showcase of Dwarven architecture and Dwarven might. For centuries, the city endured throughout, and no army in the surface world had been able to penetrate the mighty peaks that are the domain of this city. What fools we were! In pride we built Karak Eight Peaks, sure of our mastery of stone and the dark beneath the world. Yet even as we built the city, the seeds of its doom were planted. Karak Eight Peaks now stands as a symbol of the eternal struggle for supremacy. Its storied halls have witnessed centuries of bloodshed, echoing the clashing of steel and the roar of battle, as dwarves, greenskins, and skaven vie for control of this once majestic city. In this episode, we will delve into the heart of the conflict that has transformed Karak Eight Peaks from a beacon of dwarf prosperity into a battlefield with a never-ending war between the most stubborn and ferocious of adversaries unfolds. Today is a great day! Today, we kill Urks! Today is vengeance! In the echoing vast halls of Karak Eight Peaks, the clang of weapons and cries of battle finally began to subside, as the dwarves claimed a hard-fought victory over the Skaven forces. The once teeming tide of Ratmen, caught in the relentless push of dwarven steel, scattered fleeing into the shadowy network of tunnels and fissures from whence they came. The dwarves knew all too well that the victory was but a fleeting moment in the age-old struggle for Karak Eight Peaks. The Skaven, as cunning as they were numerous, would regroup and return, driven by their insatiable hunger for conquering the stronghold for the Council of Thirteen. Let them come! We will be waiting! In another hall of the stronghold, across many dark tunnels, another bloody battle was taking place. A brutal clash unfolded between the marauding greenskins and the insidious Skaven. What began as a skirmish quickly escalated into a full-blown battle. As the conflict intensified, both sides poured in reinforcements the narrow tunnels and vast halls becoming stages for a spectacle of violence and fury. The Greenskins unleashed their most ferocious orcs and towering trolls, while the Skaven countered with their warlock engineers and monstrous rat ogres. The air was thick with the din of war cries and the clash of metal, as both races attacked each other with brutal savagery. The ground was littered with the fallen, and the battle raged on. With neither side yielding an inch, and the fight would continue in the shadowed corridor of one of the hundreds of halls in the legendary stronghold. Like this one, many battles are being constantly fought in the tunnels and halls of Karak Eight Peaks. From swift and deadly skirmishes to full-blown battles involving thousands of warriors from each side struggling for control of the stronghold. But to understand how the dwarves, the skaven, and the greenskins 
ended up in this bloody war of attrition, let's briefly talk about the tragic history of this place. However, before we dive in, we want to extend a shout out to our patrons and YouTube channel members, whose support is the foundation that enables us to bring you epic tales like this one. And a toast to the ones who share our videos and leave comments. As thanks to you, our tales continue to unfold while we explore the fascinating world of Warhammer Fantasy. Conceived and constructed under the guidance of the finest dwarf engineers and architects, Carrick Eight Peaks was a marvel of stonework, a fortress as impregnable as it was splendid. Its vast halls and tunnel networks were carved deep into the heart of the mountains. The founding of the stronghold was marked by auspicious omens and grand celebrations that echoed throughout the dwarf realms. It was built to stand eternal, with defenses that could repel any invader, and vaults deep enough to secure the vast treasures and knowledge accumulated by the dwarf race. Its eight peaks, each crowned with watchtowers and fortifications, surveyed the surrounding lands, establishing the dominion of the dwarves over the mountains. It was also renowned for possessing the most extensive network of mines throughout the entirety of the Karaz Angkor, famed for containing vast reserves of precious metals and countless jewels. The architecture of Karak Eight Peaks was unrivaled, blending functionality with grandeur. Its gates were forged from the hardest metals inscribed with runes of protection. The Great Hall, at the heart of the Stronghold, was a masterpiece of artistry. Its ceilings vaulted high, and supported by columns carved into the likeness of the Dwarf ancestors. The Throne Room, home to the ruling Lord of the Peaks, was adorned with precious stones and metals, reflecting the wealth and power of its inhabitants. The engineering feats of the dwarves also extended with an intricate network of mines, forges, and workshops that drove the stronghold's economy and military might. The forges of Karak Eight Peaks were legendary, producing weapons and armor that were coveted across the world. Beyond its military strength, Carrick Eight Peaks was a center of culture and prosperity. Its libraries held vast collections of ancient texts and tomes, preserving the history and wisdom of the dwarf people. The stronghold's economy thrived on trade. Its markets were filled with goods from across the known world, and its wealth attracted merchants diplomats, and adventurers. With all said, Carrick Eight Peaks was not merely a stronghold. Its strategic position and its wealth in resources in ancient relics made it a prize worth more than gold. It was a place that demonstrated the glory of the Dwarf Empire at its zenith, a matter of pride for the stubborn race. Such wealth and prosperity was found beneath the mountains, and it is said that no dwarf had ever felt happier during this time. Yet, as history would tell, even the greatest of fortresses can fall, and the shadows of conflict would soon envelop Carrick Eight Peaks, marking the end of its golden age and the beginning of its longest siege. Due to the dark machinations of the Dark Elves and the foolish actions of a young Phoenix King, 
the dwarves who were involved in the War of Vengeance. The War of the Ancients, or the War of the Beard, depending on whom one asks. It was a bloody conflict between the dwarves and the High Elves. This period was marked by relentless war, with millions of dwarves and elves clashing over the transgressions of the few. The dwarves expelled the elves from forested domains encircling their stronghold, a move that ironically accelerated their decline as the peak of prosperity for both races had been their trade and commerce. Yet the prolonged war, lasting for decades, resulted in a massive economic loss for both races. It took immeasurable damage and an untold number of lives from both sides before the death of the High Elves' Phoenix King marked the end of the grueling fighting. The elves retreated back to their home island of Ulfwan, and the dwarves retreated back to the mountains, both races weary of a war that had cost them greatly. Death comes to the dwarven realms. Not long after their hard-won victory over the high elves, volcanic activities began to roar to life in the east and the mountains began to buckle as an unprecedented cataclysm shook the world. Earthquakes shook the lands of the old world and volcanoes belched ash and rock, covering the lands in a blanket of destruction across the entire mountain range. Countless mines had collapsed to earthquakes. All of the holds were damaged and the underway was partially ruined, blocked with rubble, floodwaters, or magma. The dwarves hid in their homes, weathering through this thunderous storm, unaware of the true danger that was about to come. With the sudden shakeup of gigantic proportions, orcs and goblins began to migrate in the hundreds of thousands westward until reaching the borders of the world's edge mountains, the home of the dwarves. The greenskins found in the mountains new places to settle, but with the strong and stubborn dwarves already living there, they had to fight for every inch of land, for every cave and tunnel, for every hall, and for every stronghold. After besting the elves, we scarcely had a moment's peace before the world itself began to shatter. Volcanoes erupted, and the land quaked so fiercely it seemed the very roots of the mountains were breaking, and as if called forth by the turmoil, the harsh hordes of orcs and their vile kin descended upon us. The Goblin Wars erupted and plunged the Dwarf Kingdom into chaos. Upon sensing weakness, armies hungry for plunder appeared like wolves at the door. And the many invasions that followed triggered a series of battles that began even before the last of the earthquakes and eruptions had finished. The Greenskins, a myriad of warbands, of orcs, goblins, and other creatures. They fought with a savage ferocity. They sought new lands, 
viewing the rich and storied halls of the dwarves as ripe for plunder and occupation. Their assaults were relentless. Wave after wave of snarling warriors came to take on the mountains and its rich holds. As rumors spread amongst the Greenskin tribes, that fierce battles were taking place beneath the mountains. Countless chieftains and war bosses sounded their horns to join the fray, ever hungry for proper battles to fight and places to conquer. The dwarves, on the other hand, were unyielding in the defense of their ancestral homes. These were not merely the places where they lived, but sacred grounds imbued with the legacy and honor of countless generations. The dwarves fought with a determination fueled by their deep-rooted connection to the land and respect for their ancestors. Each hold, each tunnel, and every hall was defended with a fierce tenacity. For to lose them was to lose a part of themselves. The battles between the Greenskins and Dwarfs were merciless. The clang of iron, the roar of cannons, and the guttural war cries of the Greenskins filled the air. The Dwarfs, renowned for their martial skill and craftsmanship, wielded weapons of unmatched quality, while the Greenskins relied on their sheer numbers and brute strength. The mountains reverberated with the sounds of conflict, as neither side gave quarter, nor did they expect any in return. Enemies infiltrated through the unguarded tunnels and overwhelmed outposts with surprise attacks. But it was not just the Greenskins that came to wreak havoc amongst the Dwarves. The sinister Skaven erupted from the lower depths in endless numbers and began to systematically attack and occupy numerous mining networks and minor holds all around the mountain range. It soon became apparent that the Skaven also intended to claim Carrick Eight Peaks for themselves. The Dwarves, already stretched thin from the relentless greenskin onslaught, found themselves fighting a war on two fronts. Fools. Every wrong is recorded. Every slight against us, page after page, etched in blood. Clan Gunnison, Carrick Eight Peaks, Joseph Butman. A new era descended upon the dwarves of the world's edge mountains, threatening their very existence. Contact between many strongholds across the realms was lost and far-flung mine works and outposts were truly on their own. The dwarf realm was reduced to isolated islands, each surrounded by a sea of foes. Greenskins coming from the valley and into the mountains. and the Skaven rising from the darkness below. Everyday life quickly became a constant battle for survival. This harsh new reality changed the nature of the Dwarf Realm forever. Born of darkness and bred in the foul depths of the Under Empire, the relentless attacks by the Skaven were characterized by subterfuge and overwhelming numbers. A nightmarish tide of fur, fang, and rusted blade 
that erupted without warning from the bowels of the earth. Skaven sappers, equipped with warp grinders, chewed through rock and dirt, stone and metal, gnawing at the very roots of the dwarf keep, pushing ever further until they made breakthroughs in several places, compromising the dwarves' positions. Despite the innumerable attacks, Carrick Eight Peaks held firm, however, for no army could ever fight past the mighty defenses the dwarves had erected on the surface of their realm over the centuries. Although forced to relinquish many settlements and minor strongholds, no dwarf in their right mind would ever imagine abandoning the glorious kingdom of Carrick Eight Peaks. By the time the Skaven strike forces advanced towards Carrick Eight Peaks, intent on burrowing several passages for their armies to infiltrate, they discovered to their dismay that the dwarves had evolved their tactics of subterranean combat to thwart these incursions. The Ratmen's assaults quickly met with formidable resistance. The once navigable tunnels and corridors were now a labyrinth of lethal traps. Additionally, the halls were defended by dwarfs wielding superior rune-forged weaponry and clad in unmatched armor. Thousands of Skaven bodies lay dead, victims to the cruel and effective traps that the dwarves had set for them. The majority of the bodies were left there to rot. The defenders of Carrick Eight Peaks had started deploying squads of iron breakers, heavily armored warriors renowned for their unyielding defense of the underways. These guardians, with their robust and heavily armored forms, were particularly effective in the cramped confines beneath the stronghold, where the overwhelming numbers of the Skaven lost their advantage. Skaven units had somehow navigated past these vigilant patrols and burrowed further into dwarf territory quickly encountered a new horror. Well-organized ranks of dwarf handgunners and the imposing presence of cannon batteries. The dwarf's artillery teams, with precise and practice movements, ignited the fuses of their war machines, unleashing devastating barrages towards the vile Skaven. The boom of cannon fire and the crackle of thunderer volleys filled the underground spaces, and with overwhelming firepower, they mowed down the Skaven invaders. The tunnels reverberated with the cacophony of gunfire and the resonant war cries of the dwarves. Confronted with the dwarves' seemingly impenetrable defenses, the Skaven warlord clans turned to the Council of Thirteen for strategic advice. The formulation of their plan spanned nearly ten generations, but ultimately promising assured victory and total dominion over the Dwarf Kingdom. The initial phase involved persuading the local greenskin war bosses and their tribes to temporarily halt their infighting to join forces in an assault on the Dwarves' surface and upper-level defenses. The Skaven meticulously synchronized their subterranean attacks with the Greenskin surface raids, overwhelming the Dwarves from both directions and gradually forcing them to cede territory. We are on it to drain the Orcs from the front. Let them face our might! Our once unbreakable stronghold was besieged on all fronts, stretching our defenses thinner than ever before. We stood firm, but amidst the chaos of battle, 
and the clamor of our foes a grieve concern to boot in our hearts. We are perilously close to losing grasp of our mighty stronghold. The strategy's second phase was a sinister campaign of slow poisoning. As the Skaven introduced deadly warpstone toxins into the dwarfs' water supplies and reservoirs. In the ensuing months, the once resilient dwarves began to succumb to the insidious effects of the contamination, their vitality sapped by the relentless assault on their bodies from the inside. Following this, the Skaven made dark pacts with Clan Mulder to procure ferocious giant rats for surprise raids on the debilitated dwarf defenders. However, it was the introduction of diabolical Skaven inventions that turned the tide of the war decisively. The Warpfire Thrower, a devastating weapon, proved instrumental in breaching the stout dwarf shield walls. Its intense heat and force cleaving through the defenders with horrifying efficiency. As the dwarves lost control of their minds and strongholds, their resolve remained unbroken, though their situation grew increasingly dire. The Skaven's use of poisoned wind globes, fragile spheres filled with a lethal gas, introduced a new horror to the already bloody conflict. The deadly vapors, impervious to armor, impervious to any amount of sheer willpower, claimed many lives, leaving countless dwarf warriors to agonize and perish in the pitch dark beneath the mountains. After enduring over a century of relentless warfare, King Lun made the heart-wrenching decision to leave Carrick eight peaks behind, where only death reigned. He ordered to seal the sacred tombs and safeguard whatever treasures they could not transport with them, commanding his people to carve a path out of their besieged realm. With a vow to reclaim their home, the dwarfs retreated. The victorious Skaven clans declared the kingdom theirs, dubbing it the City of Pillars, and marking the end of an era for the dwarves. In the centuries I have been the High King, our enemies have thought us weak. Cowards, hiding in the deepest, darkest places. <laughs> Fools. Karak Eight Peaks is built in a natural amphitheater, ringed by eight snow-covered peaks. The city above ground lay in ruins, swarming with the thousands of greenskins that were able to breach the defenses when the dwarves departed. They claimed the upper levels of the city for themselves, while the Skaven and other nameless monsters roamed the network of dark halls, mines, and tombs below. In places where it is too far for the light of the sun to reach, the Skaven now battle the orcs and goblins that they themselves first coerced into attacking. They pit their might and guile against each other in a savage series of battles for domination of the former dwarf hold. An endless war that continues to this day. Ever since its fall, the descendants of King Lun, the last king to rule Carrick Eight Peaks, have tried to reclaim the hold and each time being repulsed with terrific losses. The Earths must pay. The most recent attempt being made by Belagar Ironhammer, direct descendant of Lun Ironhammer, and known by his followers as the true rightful king of Carrick Eight Peaks. 
By this point, many expeditions had ended in failure, as the Greenskins and Skaven were entrenched too deeply into Carrick Eight Peaks already. But the dwarfs, out of their stubbornness or their pride, were eager to reconquer their old stronghold. To arm Belagar's forces, Thoric Ironbrow, the esteemed master runesmith of Karak Azul, meticulously crafted new axes and hammers, each engraved with potent runes. Meanwhile, Thorgrim Grudgebearer himself, the High King of the Dwarves, bestowed upon Belagar's warriors venerable weapons from his extensive treasure trove. It was an assembly reminiscent of the ancient epochs, a time when whole legions marched into battle, their hands gripping runic weapons and their bodies clad in armor imbued with protective runes. Belagar and his followers of Clan Angra, numbering around 500 dwarf warriors, broke through the outer defenses and fought their way into their ancient home. Fully intent of recovering their rightful kingdom, slowly they found and sealed off the tunnels the goblins and Skaven had used to breach the city, while closing chambers and halls that were too corrupted or damaged to ever be recovered. Let them see what Dawi of the Angron clan are made of! Through hard-fought battles against Greenskins and Skaven alike, Belagar and his men managed to establish a solid foothold, largely confined to the surface and upper levels of the mountain, and fortified it against the inevitable counterattacks that surely would come. And as expected, night goblins assailed them, and overwhelming tides many thousands of times their number. The dwarfs held strong, with the power of war engines and a wall of steel that no foe could pass. Despite being under a near continuous siege, Belagar and his dwarves stood firm against the waves of attackers that sought to destroy their place amongst the ruins. The chieftain of the Greenskins called off the ineffective attacks after a few days. Greenskin losses were in the tens of thousands, but Skarsnik knew he could afford to take such casualties daily if need be. The assault was merely a probe, and he now guessed what the dwarves were up to. So the shrewd night goblin leader proceeded with the next part of his devious plan to kill these prideful dwarves. Skarsnik is the leader of the night goblins of the Crooked Moon tribe, and the most feared goblin of Karak Eight Peaks. He is a mastermind when it comes to laying complex ambushes and setting elaborate traps. It is said that the abominable deeds done by Skarsnik have gained their own chapter in the Book of Grudges of the Dwarves. Although a fierce fighter himself, what really makes Skarsnik a formidable fighter is his ever-present pet, the great cave squig named Gabla a beast grown huge by a steady diet of goblins, dwarves, and skaven. The great squig was but a tiny squiggling. When Skarsnik rescued it from the brink of death, this act of mercy is a rarity among the Greenskins, a culture characterized by its survival of the fittest ethos. Yet, this early intervention by Skarsnik fostered an unbreakable bond between the two. From that moment forward, Gabla has stood by Skarsnik as an unwaveringly loyal and eternally hungry companion. While the allegiance of his fellow goblin chieftains and warlords might be questioned, Gabla's fidelity is beyond doubt. Having saved Skarsnik's life on many occasions, and as a showcase of their deep bond, 
or perhaps to drive fear into the hearts of his enemies and allies alike. Skarshnik constantly feeds the great squig with the succulent flesh of prisoners and fools that dare to question his tactics. Through ruthlessness and cunning, Skarsnik has risen to command in the midst of the bitter and ongoing three-way battle between the Greenskins, the dwarves that want to reclaim their lost stronghold, and the vast army of the Skaven that lurk in the lower levels of Karak Eight Peaks. As dwarves attempt to venture in or out of the stronghold, he relentlessly pursues them with hunting parties to then display their beards on tall poles for all within the citadel walls to see. His cunning is unmatched, consistently drawing the dwarves into one deadly ambush after another. So predictable, these stunties act like clockworks! While also dealing with the vile skaven that want to take the upper levels of the stronghold for themselves. Under the leadership of Skarsnik, the Crooked Moon Tribe has ascended to become the preeminent Greenskins force within Karak Eight Peaks. All other chieftains and warlords acknowledge Skarsnik as the king of the Eight Peaks. With their growing strength, the skirmishes intensified, not just with the neighboring dwarf contingents, but with Greenskin armies as well marking a tumultuous era of conflict and strife under his rule. Queek Headtaker, warlord of Clan Moors, has vowed to one day place the head of Skarsnik on his trophy rack. We will give them battle, yes, yes. I'll take many beards this day, day. The once great kingdom of the Bearded Ones is now the fortress lair of the powerful clan, commanded by Queek. Queek is distinguished not just by his fearsome prowess in battle, but also by his insatiable lust for trophies, specifically the heads of his enemies, which he collects with a zeal that is unsettling even by Skaven standards. He adorns his lair and his armor with the severed heads of his victims, a macabre trophy collection that serves as a warning to all who dare cross him. This obsession with head-taking has earned him his moniker of head-taker, and a reputation as a relentless hunter of not just dwarves and greenskins, but also fellow Skaven who stand in his way. He is also known for his volatile temper and unpredictability, traits that make him as much a danger to his allies as to his enemies. However, his tactical acumen and success in expanding the territories of Clan Moors under the shadow of the Council of Thirteen cannot be understated. No other rat must slay more than me. me. Any who attempt to outkill me, me will pay. Get them! Get them now, now! Unlike many of his kin, who rely on numbers and deceit, Queek is known to lead from the front charging into the fray with his trusted Red Guard, a unit of elite storm vermin that are as deadly as they are loyal. His aggressive tactics and personal bravery are anomalies within the typically cautious and backstabbing Skaven society. Skaven labor groups and strike forces are always expanding and digging new tunnels and passages to attack their foes from the most unexpected of places, inevitably infesting all places that they can scurry to. Understanding the intrinsic value of surprise in the confined spaces of the tunnels, 
the vile skaven of Clan Moors frequently orchestrate ambushes against their enemies. The vermin, well acquainted with the twisting maze of the underways, strike swiftly and retreat before their victims can mount a coordinated response. This hit-and-run style of warfare creates confusion and even fear among the greenskins and dwarves, gradually wearing them down. In the endless conflict for dominance over Karak Eight Peaks, Queek Headtaker stands out as a pivotal figure for the efforts of Clan Moors in the war. His personal vendetta against Belagar Ironhammer, the rightful dwarf king of Karak Eight Peaks, and his rivalry with Skarsnik, the warlord of the Crooked Moon tribe, have led to some of the most brutal confrontations in the bloody conflict. Queek's ambition is nothing less than the total annihilation of the dwarf defenders and their greenskin adversaries. Seeking to claim the ultimate prize of Karak Eight Peaks for Clan Moors, and more importantly, for himself. And so it goes in Karak Eight Peaks. Below the mountain ranges of the world's edge mountains, rages a bloody war of attrition between the three races. Inch by inch, tunnel by tunnel, each step forward is paid in blood. The battle grinds on and on in a permanent state of siege. Not a day goes by in Carrick Eight Peaks without some plot, probing raid, ambush, assassination, or full-scale assault. Greenskins, Skaven, and Dwarves fight incessantly, and with each new tunnel invasion or bitterly contested counterattack, the underground warfare evolves. Remains full. Thank you for joining us on this journey through one of Warhammer Fantasy's most legendary strongholds. If you've enjoyed delving into the depths of Karak Eight Peaks with us, please consider sharing and subscribing to our channel for more Warhammer Fantasy content. And if you're interested in supporting our work further, Becoming a producer on our Patreon page offers you a unique opportunity to contribute to the creation of content like this, plus access to our Discord server, your name on the credits, and more. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.